I used to really find great enjoyment from playing first person shooters. One of the first games I bought when I got my Xbox 360 was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, so much of my time was spent playing that game with my friends. I was very good at it, of course. This is me we're talking about. It was my first experience of playing any game online. Despite all the problems that game had, it was deeply enjoyable and a formative experience in my quote-unquote gaming life. As the Call of Duty series progressed, I continued to buy the games, but around the release of Call of Duty Ghosts, I thought that was it for me and shooters. They were not making me happy like the older ones were. They were too samey. How many times in a row could I buy what was functionally the same game with slight changes in terms of the aesthetics and game modes, but fundamentally the same gameplay? So that was the last shooter that I bought for a while, until I got the Halo Master Chief collection, which I wasn't very good at and didn't really enjoy. My friends had fond memories of the series, but I wasn't a Halo guy. But it was only a matter of time before a shooter I truly loved came along. Enter Overwatch. I didn't get Overwatch when it first came out. Instead, I decided to buy it after a free weekend in September 2017. I had played it before, jumped on for some other free weekends that they'd done. But this time the game really clicked with me and I decided to make the purchase. I'm living proof that free weekends do work. I don't think I was aware of Overwatch going right back to its initial release in May 2016, although by being somewhat knowledgeable of the gaming space as well as being on the internet, no doubt I had seen some kind of information about it, even if I didn't take it on board in the long term. While I had played the free weekends before, I never bought it because I felt that being such a team game, I needed a group of friends to play it with, and the only ones who were interested owned it on other systems already and couldn't make the transfer across. But this second free weekend I played was so much fun. In first person shooters in the past, my great problem was that I wasn't very good at aiming, so I never contributed to my team in terms of kills, but I was always determined to get the most objective points. I could help my team that way instead. An Overwatch with its diverse cast of heroes allows players like me, who might not be so mechanically skilled as others, to still contribute to their team, and more importantly, have fun in other ways. The first hero I was drawn to was the healer Mercy, the Swiss medic who can heal players with her staff or boost their damage, and also has the ability to revive fallen teammates too. This was perfect for me. I could help my team to win by keeping them alive, allowing them to go and do the killing. Playing Mercy probably doesn't take a lot of mechanical skill in comparison to other heroes, but it was the entryway into this game that I needed. Lots of players don't enjoy playing the healers or the supports, so when my team needs one I'm more than happy to step up and fill that role. Playing that less favoured healer role allowed me entry into the colourful Overwatch world, which is such a contrast to the drab brown and grey military shooters I was used to. While early in my gaming life I might have seen the appeal of the traditional military shooter, as was evidenced by my repeat purchases of the Call of Duty series. Somewhere along the way, I'd maxed out on my fill of these kinds of games. It was time for some colour. One of the first games I bought for my Xbox One was Sunset Overdrive, a bright, fun, light-hearted game that I think is still underappreciated by the wider gaming community. I really adored that game. I appreciate both Overwatch and Sunset Overdrive for similar reasons. The colour and brightness made it stand out for the crowd. New and innovative game mechanics, at least to me, in the form of the on-the-rail skateboard shooting for Sunset Overdrive and the concept of a hero-based shooter in Overwatch. As I got used to playing the healer role, I tried my hand at other hero types, my second favourite position being the tank hero. If I couldn't dodge enemy fire very well or have great aim, maybe I could at least absorb a lot of damage. I don't think I'll ever be the one-shotting, game-winning, headshot-hitting kind of player, but with my good support play and improving tank play, I think I help rather than hinder my team. I know it might be a bit of a cliche, but I really do think there's an Overwatch hero and playstyle for everyone. I think it really is a game that almost anyone could pick up and get the hang of, to some degree at least. While Overwatch is really fun to play with its great heroes and game modes that I haven't even covered yet, it does contain a slightly concerning side in the form of loot boxes. It could be argued that Overwatch was one of the principal games to increase the widespread integration of loot boxes and loot box style systems into big budget games. Along with FIFA's and EA Sports' use of the Ultimate Team packs, the Overwatch loot box system is one of the most well-known and almost certainly most profitable forms of in-game microtransactions in full price games. While Overwatch's loot boxes provide only cosmetic items that don't impact gameplay in any way, and the loot boxes can be earned in-game by levelling up and in the arcade area by winning matches on certain game modes, there is still something very insidious about them. 
The call to splash out and spend real world money to get the items that you might miss out on catches me in a way that other games in the past have not. I'm normally the last person to be spending money on microtransactions because I think of myself as someone who understands these tactics for the market employee that they are, and yet I'm drawn in. I know I can get the boxes in game, but I still want to spend my own money to be with a chance, a better chance, of getting the items I want. Overwatch drives this kind of feeling by running seasonal events. As I type this, the summer game seasonal event has just started. As I type this, the summer game seasonal event has just started. During which time, all loot boxes earn a special summer games loot boxes that provide the special summer games items in them. But after the event, you won't be able to get these items in loot boxes or even buy them with the credits you sometimes earn. Until the event rolls around next year, of course, when no doubt there will be even more summer games items added. Outside of the game and loot boxes, Overwatch has drawn me in in another way that no other game has. Esports. Overwatch Esports, primarily the Overwatch League, is really the only esport I've ever watched with any kind of consistency, or even understood. I've been to live viewing parties and did have tickets to see the London-based team, the London Spitfire, live and in person prior to the pandemic. I even do a weekly podcast about London Spitfire with the fan association Hangar 9, which you should check out. Link will be in the description. I don't think I'll ever have a connection to another multiplayer game like I do with Overwatch. At some point in the near future, Overwatch 2 will be released, and I just hope that it will be able to keep up the high standards that Overwatch has set. This episode was written and produced by me, Stephen Lemontree. Our outro music is Simplicity by Macroform Music. If you ever want to contact us, you can do so on Instagram and Twitter at nevetzlt or email nevetzlt at gmail.com. That's N E V E T S L T. Life is looking up at the stars and muttering, wow, to yourself. We'll see you next week. Thank you.